Good morning, everybody. All right, so day two of this investigation three, we're recognizing quadratic patterns. This is actually the example investigation 3.2. I just took it from the book, rewrote it, put it up here so I can go through and do these examples with you because it's not the easiest thing to teach, but I'm gonna use this raw example and you guys can uh, skip investigation 3.2 because that's what we're doing right now. And then you're gonna do some work in the back of the book and then some kind of academy work today as well. So um, I just rewrote, if you want to follow along and see what they wrote in the book at 3.2, uh, case one, there are two teams that have the same number of players and they will each shake hands once. Case two is I got one team has one more player than the other and they will each shake hands once. And case three is each member of a team will shake hands with each other just once. So let's do case one first. Let's pretend that in the first scenario, I got five players, okay? Five player team plays another five player team, okay? So every time, every person's gonna shake their hands a total of five times. So this guy's shaking five hands, five hands, five hands, so on and so forth. All together, I have a total of five players will shake 25 hands all day. Now let's just continue to sound. Let's say I have a 10 player team. Well, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Now this guy is shaking 10 hands, 10 hands, 10 hands, so on and so forth. If this is 10, 10, 10 all the way down, I got 10 players are shaking a total of 100 hands. So this one's probably the easiest to recognize a quadratic relationship because if I got n number of players in this case and I square it, I'm going to get the total number of things shook. I'm going to have a total of n squared is going to equal the total number of hands shook. Okay? That's one way to recognize it. Remember, key thing here is quadratic relationships are always uh, x or n or a, something to the power of 2. So that's that first example. Where's my... There we go. Now let's do the second case. Okay? So the second case, we got... One team has one more player than the other. So I got a six player team versus a seven player team, or an eight player team versus a nine player team. So if that's the case, this again, sometimes drawing it out for yourself helps you see it a lot better. Three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Every person shaking a total of seven hands, right? So seven, 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 seven. I got a total of seven times six. So this first case, six and seven players, total of 42 handshakes. Just call it HS for now, just to speed things up a little bit. So I got six and seven players, a six player team versus a seven player team. There's a total of 42 handshakes. Now let's just add one more to this. I got eight and nine, right? Well, now instead of shaking seven hands, every single person here on this eight player team is shaking nine players. So I got a total of nine, 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 so on and so forth. So I got a total of 72. So eight and nine players. This is a total of 72 handshakes. Now, how do I write an equation that represents this? So I can actually recognize two different ways of seeing this. One more player than the other. If I'm looking at six and eight as my base numbers, if I got a six player team versus a seven player team, right? I'm playing against one more player, but I'm using six. So n times n plus one. Let's see if this works because if I got six as my n, I can't use six and seven, I'm using six. Six plus one is seven, seven times six is 42. So that works. So this actually says n squared plus n. But remember, I used six as my number, not seven. Okay? There's one, that means one more. Double check that this actually works and do it again. Uh, eight plus one is nine. Nine times eight is 72. So this, set, this equation does satisfy us using the lower number of the two. But now let's say I want to use, let's say I recognize it as something different. Maybe it's like, you know, I got a seven player team versus six player team, so I got one less. Let's see if I can do this. 
n minus n minus 1. Let's see if this works. If I'm using 7 as my base number, not 6 now, well, 7 minus 1 is 6. 6 times 7 is 42. That works. Double check it again. 9 minus 1 is 8. 8 times 9 is 72. This also works. So I will accept any answer for something like this. And don't think it's got to be one way or the other. If you look at it as lower to higher, go with this. Or higher to lower, use this. Okay? You'll see some examples in today's work that look kind of like this. And my last example is going to be part C, where it says we have a case three. We got a four player team and an eight player team. Okay? So this is a little harder to recognize. Okay? I'll do the eight over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm a, ver I'm a visual creature. Trust me. I, I think you guys will be better off drawing this out so you can see it. Now, each four player on this four player team, they're shaking hands with each other. So this guy is shaking hands with him, with him, with him. That's a total of three handshakes. Now, this guy is not shaking hands with him because they've already shaken hands. So he just goes here and here. Total of two handshakes. And the last one is these two guys got to shake hands because they've already shaken everywhere else. So I got a total here of six handshakes. Over here, we're looking for some patterns. I got eight player teams. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got seven handshakes. And again, the same thing holds true. We're not going back because these guys shook hands. I got one, two, three, four, five, six. And I can see a pattern going on here. Right now, I can see that it's always going down by one. Going down by one, four, three, two. And then obviously the last two guys got to shake hands. This is one. When I add this up, I get a total of 28 handshakes. Now, this one's a little harder to recognize. One second, sweet. This one's a little harder to recognize only because um, you got to see what's the difference of the difference. It's constantly going down by one. So I think that's going to play a role in our final answer of what's going to happen here. So if I got four minus one, right? I'm trying the total number of handshakes. It's got to equal six. Um, four minus one is three. That's not the total, so that's not going to work. This is quadratic. I got to have n squared. So now let's just do n squared. Okay. So if I do n on the outside times quantity of n minus one, well now I'm going to have n. If I got four, four minus one is three. Three times four is twelve. How do I make it equal six? Well, I'm going to divide it by 2, and that'll work for just this scenario. This is how you guys can think through things. How can I make it work in my situation? We know it's quadratic. It has to be n squared. One second, sweetie. Um, thank you. Now, um, let's double check. Uh, 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 divided, by, 12 divided by 2 is 6. That works here. Let's see if this also works here on this one. So I got 8 minus 1 is 7. 7 times 8 is 56. 56 divided by 2 is 28. So this does work. Now, I use this raw example from the um, book because I thought it was really good, good way to teach given our separation from each other, and hopefully this makes sense. If it doesn't, when you see stuff like this in today's work, come and ask me questions. I'll help you out. Um, I've got a couple other examples I want to go over with you guys, uh, and it deals strictly with uh, more factoring by grouping, some stuff you'll see in... Khan Academy, I'm going to do that in one second. Let me get this up on the thing. Welcome back. All right, so the last example I want to go over to you guys are some examples that you're going to see in today, this week's work. I have 10 assignments that I put on Khan Academy. They're not due until Friday. So please know that uh, one thing I have not gone over strictly with you guys yet is factoring by grouping. And this is a new strategy, another way you can factor these quadratics when the leading coefficient is bigger than one. So... Here's how I want you guys to think through it, okay? I want you guys to know that um, we got our end product, we got our middle sum. So we know that two numbers have to multiply to this, and those same two numbers have to also add to this. So I know that A times B is going to be A and our B, okay? And if I'm looking at this like such, I know that this equals 4 times negative 21 equals negative 84. I also know that A plus B has to equal this middle number. 
So I know that um, uh, I know that a times b has equal a plus b has to equal 25. So that's going to be um, 21 plus 4 is equal to 25. So this is equal to 25. So the same two numbers have to multiply to add, add to this. Now, how do I go about figuring this out? Well, I got to find my factors of 84. All right. And I know my factors are obviously 1 and 84. And no matter which one I make negative or positive, they're too far apart to add up to 25. Okay. So now I'm looking at some more factors. I got like just going in order. I got 2 and 42. And again, I don't care which one I make negative or positive. I'm not going to be able to add the 25. So I'm going to keep going down. I got 3 and 28 are my factors of 84 because 3 times 28 is 84. Um, use your calculator, guys, for something like this because it's not the, the easiest math sometimes. Uh, but now here, I got some, some good numbers because I know when I make one of these negative or one of these positive, I'm going to be able to add this to 25. So I think I found my factors. Now here's the key thing. I want to make sure that I group my numbers appropriately. Okay? So if I got, uh, I know that uh, my two middle numbers are going to be 28x uh, minus 3x, because that's going to add to 25. I got minus 21, and I got plus 4x squared. Now, this is, in our head, we just created like a FOIL situation, and when we FOIL it out, we combine our terms. We know our middle two numbers here. Now, this is crucial. Now, I purposely put my 28 here, my negative 3 here, because I'm grouping them. I know that these share a common factor, and I know these both share a common factor. This is how you factor by grouping. I purposely did this. I put them by each other because if I look at this, I can see that 4 and 28 share a common factor of 4. Always pull out the GCF. And they also share an X. So I can factor out a 4X of both of these. And I'm left with X plus 7. My GCF of these two terms is going to be negative 3. So I'll factor out my negative 3 of both. And... So messy. I got negative 3 divided out of here, so this is going to be x plus 7. Now, it's no surprise that it ended up turning out to have two of the exact same parentheses like this, because now we know the factors. One factor is going to be x plus 7. The other factor is going to be 4x minus 3. One second, sweetie. 4x minus 3. And we should, because we were able to factor this by grouping like this, you should be able to foil this out and get this exact same answer. So I know this times this is 4x squared. This times this is negative 3x plus 28x adds to positive 25x. And negative 7 times, I'm sorry, positive 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. There's one example. I'm going to do one more with you guys over here, okay? Again, we got our... Um, we got our, anyway, one second, guys. Sorry about that. So the last example we'll do right here is this one right here, 6x squared plus 7x plus 1. How to factor this by grouping? Again, we know that uh, 6 times 1 is 6, all right? We know that 6 times 1 is 6, and also 6 plus 1 is 7. So now we're finding factors that, this is pretty simple compared to this one. We already know that uh, we're gonna have a 6x and an x. So we know that this breaks down into 6x plus x is my middle term, so that adds to 7x. I'm gonna leave this as plus one, and I'm gonna leave this as 6x squared. And again, I was very purposeful on putting certain numbers next to each other because I see some common factors there and some common factors right there. So I'm going to factor out my 6x of both of these. So I'm left with just x plus 1. And my only common factor of x plus 1 is 1. So explicitly write it this time. So it's still left with the same thing, but I want you to visually see it because now I'm left with the exact same parentheses. That's how you know you factor by grouping correctly. So this is a factor, 6x plus 1. And the other factor is x plus 1. 
and this is the proper way to factor by grouping. So I'm assuming there's going to be a few more questions today. Come see me. Come ask questions. I'll help you guys out at 1 o'clock today.